It's finally here, the WIA State Football Finals here at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison. Hello, everybody. Rob Hernandez along with Dennis Semra. We welcome you to our special WIA State Finals edition of Prep Rally. Dennis, we start in Division One. A great matchup, one of area interest, finally, a Big 8 team in the state finals in Division 1 for the first time in a long time. Sun Prairie taking on Heartland Arrowhead in what should be a dynamite ball game between two outstanding programs. Yes, you look, one of three matchups, unbeaten teams. And in our poll during the season, Arrowhead's been number one and Sun Prairie number three. This is the dream matchup we were looking for. As far as uh, the Arrowhead Warhawks, obviously they've got uh, a lot of uh, athleticism, a lot of size, but they throw the football. How has Sun Prairie handled that? I mean, last week, Arrowhead and uh, their quarterback, Brady Kelleher, 400 yards passing plus in the first half. I don't think Sun Prairie's seen a team like that all season. No, they haven't. And you, you have a program that's won four state titles. Five times they've been a runner-up. The whole community is used to Camp Randall. Sun Prairie hasn't been here since 1995. These kids don't even remember that. Ryan Curran, though, an excellent quarterback with uh, Mar Michael Marchese, and then Starlin Merriam, a running back. You have two combinations over... 1,300 yards rushing and passing. Very balanced attack, which is going to bode them well. Their pass defense, though, against uh, Kelleher is key. State uh, final appearance number 10 for Heartland Arrowhead, uh, setting a WI state record. So, the, uh, as Dennis said, the Warhawks with a lot of state finals experience here on the carpet behind us. Dennis in Division Two, Mequon Homestead, a team that Heartland Arrowhead has seen three times in the state finals in the last decade. Moving down to Division Two, they've made it to the state finals, but uh, task doesn't get any easier. They draw three-time defending champion Wanakee. Yeah, this is one program, though, that's not going to have a fear factor. A lot of teams come out here, Waterford last year. The last two time teams that have played Wanakee here, they've had the deer in the headlights approach. 2006 and 2008 in Division One, Homestead won state titles. So, again, a program and a coaching staff used to winning here. But in Pat Rice and his Wanakee Warriors going for 49 wins in a row, a state record, four titles in a row, which would be uh, second most behind Edgar's six. And a team with a lot of experience. A lot of experience, and of course, they dodged the bullet in the state semifinals, beating Whitefish Bay in overtime. With it, ironically, Whitefish Bay, the one team that Homestead lost to, 14 to 7 during the season. So uh, a big matchup to watch in Division Two on Friday afternoon. In Division Three, Wapaka comes in with a 12 and 0 record. The Comets upset uh, two-time defending state champion West Appear in the state semifinals. They'll take on Waukesha Catholic Memorial. Catholic Memorial 10 and 2. Dennis, one of their losses, a 50 to 7 drubbing at the hands of Arrowhead, which is here in Division One. Speaks a lot to the fact that when you're a small team playing in a big conference, it sometimes sets you up well for the postseason. It, it definitely does. And Mount Horror Barnevald found that out when they had a play last week against a team that just tremendous size and experience. Division Four, another area team, Walworth Bigfoot, back in the state finals again. They bring a 12-0 record into the state final game against Somerset 11-1. You got a chance to see Bigfoot. They're big, Dennis, not just in the feet. I mean, they are big all the way around, across the line, and, and they've got speed to boot. Well, Somerset was here last year, was the runner-up. Walworth Bigfoot has won a title in 2009. On that 2009 team, Mason Dixon had one carry. He got hammered, he said. He, he was hoping to get back his senior year and have a chance. Last week, he did the hammering. And uh, there, you look at what they've been able to accomplish this year, nobody has really pushed them. In, Freedom uh, had a 16-7 to lead in the second quarter. That's the closest anybody's had to even putting a hurting on uh, Bigfoot. Big, strong, not as fast and speed-wise as they've been in the past, but very physical. That'll be the only evening game of the two-day state finals, the 7 o'clock game on Thursday night here at Camp Randall. Dennis Lancaster, a team that uh, uh, motivated by last year's overtime loss to Colby in the state finals, they're back 12-0. They take on another unbeaten Amherst 12-0. Amherst, the team that knocked Colby out of the postseason in uh, level four. Uh, how much can motivation carry Lancaster now that Colby's not here to face him? Well, you have uh, Troy Baker, Trey Mazzara, and A.J. Day all averaging over seven yards a carry. Very inexperienced. They've been here before. Their focus is a gold ball. Not doesn't matter who it's against. It's to avenge the double overtime loss, and I think they're ready for it. And the Arrow is one of many teams you'll see this week here at Camp Randall with speed, and on carpet, that speed looks even faster. So we'll look forward to seeing Lancaster make another run at a state title in Division 5. That game, 4 o'clock Thursday uh, at Camp Randall Stadium. Division 6, another battle of unbeatens. Fond du Lac St. Mary Springs after knocking out Iowa Grant in the state semifinals. They'll take on Eau Claire Regis at uh, 
uh, both teams 12 and 0, and uh, Regis knocked out Edgar in a battle of unbeatens at level four. Uh, this is the, I think, the heavyweight match uh, of former WISA powers that everyone's been looking for. Yeah, to. as I call it, the WISA division, which I'm sure the WA doesn't like. But you take a look at what Regis did. They beat an Edgar team that had outscored three opponents, 159 to nothing, and they shut them out. And uh, now you're going up against a team from Springs who's hammered everybody. And we talked last year, as soon as they won the title, we'd see Coach Hyland. He's got a walker after having some hip uh, surgery problems. He's on the sideline, and they got a good shot. Yeah, he came back for a reason. This is a very good Fond du Lac Springs team, and they'll be here at uh, 1 o'clock on Thursday afternoon at Camp Randall Stadium. The uh, whole uh, festivities gets going on Thursday at 10 a.m. with Potosi out of the Six Rivers Conference at 12-0, making their state finals debut against Glenwood City. Glenwood City comes in at 10-2, and probably the lowest-seeded team out of that uh, initial bracketing, Dennis, to make it down to Camp Randall. But uh, in Division 7, it's all about who's healthy and how you're playing at this time of year. should be a great ball game in Division yeah, 7. Sometimes you have a tendency to get running clocks in this game where one team, you get the deer in the headlight uh, approach, but in a Potosi team averaging 42 points a game, they're ready for the carpet. They are. And we're ready for the carpet, too, here at Camp Randall Stadium. We'll be here all day Thursday, all day Friday with live blog uh, coverage and as well as uh, video and photos from the state finals games, all seven divisions. You can look at WisconsinPrepZone.com. We'll have a special WIA state finals page set up, and you can see all the action, track all the scores, and uh, all the highlights, post-game reaction. Gavel to gavel coverage of the WIA State Football Finals. For Dennis Semrau, I'm Rob Hernandez. Thanks for watching Prep Rally. We'll see you at Camp Randall Stadium.